George the Tech. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my Twisted Wave webinar focusing on audiobook production. This is really um, me just trying to pour every piece of information I can into your brains um, about how to make this audiobook recording process smooth, less painful, easier to replicate over and over, uh, just a system, a workflow, and just trying to give you all the tools. And there's going to be tools today that aren't even built into Twisted Wave because I feel like you should at least know about them. And uh, hopefully you'll get a lot out of this today. So thanks for being here. Oof, look at this agenda. So much happening, I had to make two columns of, of, of bullets. Um, so we're going to talk about preparing your space for recording, <laughs> whether it's a studio, a closet, a booth, a, booth, a nook, or a dungeon. Um, mic choices and technique, just some best practices, file management and staying organized, setting the best recording levels, then forgetting it, not having to mess with it. Recording techniques, straight record, clicker, punch and roll, punch in, insert, all these different ways you can record your audio. Twisted Wave Remote for iOS. Did you know that existed? Um, working with a proofer. Editing as you go or in post workflows. Helpful add-on processing plugins. Recording or editing in your pickups. Recording and editing in your pickups. Um, mastering. What is it? What, what does ACX want? Um, the sequence in which we process audio in the mastering process, the mastering sequence. Uh, batch processing with stacks, which is a way to automate your mastering. Um, and then a few extras that aren't uh, either included or free with Twisted Wave. So one is free. That's final, uh, an app called Second Opinion. We'll talk about that and why it's a really awesome way to check your work when you're completely finished before you submit it to ACX. Um, and then we'll touch on a new feature that you may find useful or just a terrible distraction. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's ability to, uh, have twisted wave actually recognize your voice and match the words to the actual words in the text. So that's a way of kind of real-time proofing. And then we'll get to the Q&A. And we may have more or less questions, but we'll try to keep it, try to keep it flowing. So it's, it's important to remember there are certain things that you're not going to be able to really fix effectively or, or even want to try to fix um, after you've recorded. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You know, there's... There are certain types of noise issues that are going to be really hard to rec rectify and you really don't want to have to deal with them later, right? So you want to deal with the stuff to, when you get started. You want to know that you're in an environment that you have as much control over as possible so that you're not, you're not spending inordinate amounts of time fixing this stuff or trying to fix and sometimes in vain. Um, after you've recorded, you don't want to have issues that are in some files and not in other files. You don't want to have issues that crop up when you're doing your pickups and then have to be fixed before you can edit them into your full chapters. Um, so keep in mind, there's th these things are very difficult to fix um, randomly. So do your best to avoid them in the first place. And for many of you, that could mean a lot of stopping and starting to work around those interruptions. Um, you don't want to have to fix bad mic technique. It's really difficult to deal with having a microphone technique that varies over the course of the recording or worse off has like really bad plosives or things that creep up and cause technical issues in the audio that are can sometimes be a huge time waste or not even possible to fix. Yeah, there are techniques, there are tools for fixing plosives, but audiobooks are a marathon, 
they take a long time to produce and you do not want to have to go in and spot fix little issues all the way through your book. That's going to derail your process and slow you down. You're probably, it may or may not be aware that you do not get paid for engineering. You only get paid to produce the final outcome. You are being paid as a producer and part of that payment as a producer is paying yourself as a narrator, paying yourself as a recording engineer, and paying yourself as a producer. Keep that in mind. Don't waste time on things you shouldn't be wasting time on. Um, as I mentioned, inconsistent mic placement can really cause you a nightmare. Like if you uh, recorded all through the chapters with the microphone in one spot, and then you go into your pickups and you're actually facing the microphone like this, or you're farther away when doing your pickups, that stuff's not going to match. It's not going to sound like it was recorded in the same place at the same time. And it's going to make your night net editing just a nightmare. You don't want to have spaces with excessive reverberation or echo. Rarely, if ever, do you have echo in any home studio because echo requires a large space. But reverberation of sound reflecting off the walls, the ceiling, the floor, the hallway down the hall, um, creating that resonant, hollow, lively sound is definitely not something you want to have to deal with. And fixing in post is still not something that we can do reliably with software. So we have to deal with that before we even start. Um, and then, um, you know, just small spaces like closets and a lot of those ISO booths can be very muddy or ringy, meaning that the sound kind of rings and resonates like you're inside a box or a tube. We need to make sure that that's not there either. That's very difficult to fix once again in software or in post. So preparing your studio requires that you give a little bit of thought about quite a bit of thought actually about where you're going to record and how are you going to get rid of those um, acoustical issues. Is your closet your best choice? It could be based on your, based on your location, based on the available space you have in your home. Um, are you in a small cramped apartment? Are you in a large home or a house freestanding? What spaces do you have available in that home to record and can you eliminate the reflective sound of your voice bouncing off the walls or, ref or bouncing around inside of a small space like a closet or an under the staircase cubby or whatever it is? And that's a tricky thing. And, you know, unfortunately, there's no measurements or statistical numbers I can give you to say your audio should sound like this. It doesn't exist. It's really something that has to be uh, judged by the ear. And so that's something that if you're getting started, um, if you don't have a mentor or a coach or somebody else that you already can bounce things off of and let them listen, that's a service that we provide. It's called a sound check. You can send the audio to us and we'll check the audio and make sure that it sounds like what it's supposed to sound like. It's a critical thing. So in terms of noises, as I mentioned before, random noises, dogs, family, loud passing vehicles, anything that changes over time or is an impulse sound, impulse like a boom or, or, or anything that's very much random in nature is pretty much a no-go, right? So you're going to have to deal with that. By just recording around it, taking a break, recording off hours, or spending quite a bit of money creating an isolation space for you to record in. An ISO booth, either uh, custom built or uh, some off the shelf prefabricated type booth, or possibly moving out of the area where you live so you have a more quiet, uh, con conducive space to recording. Some noise is acceptable, and that's sort of noise that just is consistent, really pretty consistent throughout the recording. What kind of noise is that? Well, that's just called what we call room tone. 